Oh boy, here I come. Hi and welcome back. I always wanted to get into the American imports for especially the PlayStation 2. There are quite a few RPGs that were only released in Japan and America and never in PAL regions. I don't know why, maybe because of the different languages or maybe RPGs were not selling that well and they the companies decided, well, we're not going to try it anymore. We're just going to release these games only in the United States and in Japan. But there are quite a few really notable, pretty good um, RPGs on the, on the PS2 that I definitely want to play. And a few weeks ago, I bought my first one, and that is Seino Saga. Seino Saga 2 is the only one that came out in PAL region. Now, Seino Saga, as you know, is sort of the of the sort of sort of little brother of the Seno Gears, Seno Gears, Seno Saga, Seno Blade. The Seno Blade games on the Nintendo Switch is from Monolith Studios. Um, they were probably called something else back then. I don't even know. I apologize. Um, but the thing is is it is basically one, two, and three. It is one giant storyline. A lot of, there are actually quite a lot of RPGs in the PS2 era that had really big storylines. The hack franchise, of course, and uh, Seno Saga 2. So it's quite weird that in PAL regions you can play Seno Saga 2, but not one. I mean, you have a bonus disc that has sort of all the cutscenes and storyline, but you can't play it, and you cannot play Seino Saga 3. Now, in terms of Seino Saga, this is probably the most expensive franchise on the PS2 in terms of RPG collecting from the United States. Um, I have seen Seino Saga uh, 3 for about three to 400 euros. I will get it one day. I, I will get it, and one day I don't mean as I mentioned with Castlevania Symphony of the Night, that game years ago was like a hundred bucks and I always told myself, one day I'll get Castlevania Symphony of the Night on PS1 and now it is like five and six hundred euros for a copy. One day, I mean, probably in now and 12 months, I'll probably get Seno Saga uh, 3. Seno Saga 2 is not super expensive and I of, of course could get the PAL region but um, yeah I also love the spines. If you know the PAL region spines of the PS2 are basically um, black with the logo and then white. That's it. Everything is white. So if you have a really huge collection, don't get me wrong, it looks cool. Kind of like the Nintendo Switch with everything is white and, um, and red or red and white. But I just find it a little bit boring. And the Xbox doesn't have that. The GameCube doesn't have that. So the GameCube and Xbox collections, if you have a big collection, they look very colorful. I love that. Don't know why, don't ask me why, I don't know. Um, so I, I do really like that the American versions have the colorful spine. Now today I actually got two other pretty notable RPGs uh, from America. However, uh, the first one is Suicoden 3, and I actually have Suicoden 3 on my PS3 because somehow they did localize the game digitally on the PS3. So I have played a little bit. I really need to delve more into Suicoden 3, um, but I actually love the box art. It looks pretty cool, and um, Suicoden is becoming, you know, slowly one of the sort of best franchises in RPG, to me at least. I really need to delve more into Suicoden 5, and I still need to play Suicoden 4 and actually Suicoden 1, so in that, and Suicoden Tactics, so in that regard, you're probably thinking, Claude, where the fuck are you talking about? You only played Suicoden 2. Well, yes, but I mean, that game is so freaking good. Um, but the game I am the most excited for to play one day is Grandia Tree. I finally got a copy because American games, you see them here and there. You see Sweet Code, okay, I have to be honest. Sweet Code, you don't really see that much. You see Santa Saga here and there. You see the Shining Force games that I really want to play in Shining Tears. You see Radiant Story here and there, but 
you don't want to see Grandia tree. And every time I see Grandia tree, or, or it is super overpriced, or it's just snatched in front of me, like ka-ching, and it is gone. And I loved Grandia 1, I love Grandia 2. Maybe Grandia 1 is better than 2. I was actually replaying Grandia 2, so I really need to beat it one day. But there are some who say, well, Grandia 3 isn't really that good, but there's also a lot of videos out there uh, from like underrated PS2 RPGs that say Grandia 3 is incredible. And I have seen some gameplay, and especially its character art and design is, I love it. That is exactly my style of RPG. Um, and for a PS2 game, graphically, it is pretty good. And I can't wait to play. Now you're thinking, but Claude, do you even have a American PS2? No, I don't. Can you even play these games? No, I don't. However, I got a pretty good deal last week. I got two PS2s, the fat versions, because the fat versions are way better if you don't want scratched discs. Um, I'm actually not using my Slims anymore. I'm using my silver PS2. Uh, fat that is in perfect condition. I got two of those for 10 bucks. Yes, seriously, 10 bucks. There are no controllers, there are uh, no wires, and the person who basically sold me these were like, I think they're broken, um, so anyone who can tinker with systems or can clean them up uh, and replace the lens, you can get it. So I said, 10 bucks, and that person was like, okay, well, here's the catch. They both work perfectly fine. Yes, they're a little bit dusty. I need to clean them out, but they work perfectly fine. Now, what am I going to do with these is there is a shop here in Holland. I have seen them here and there that mods PS2s. And basically, of course, with, you know, with the hard drive and you can play all your games digitally. I know, I know, but I don't know. It's, I don't know. Something there's something about putting a disc in a system and whatever. So maybe one day I will use the Mac boot and stuff. But basically, they can mod your PS2 to run Japanese and, P and American um, PS2 games. You do have to sort of come over to them. It is a a um, store, so it's a company. It's not like just some weird ass dude in his basement. It is a pretty big company, from what I can see. And that mod system, you can also buy, for example, the uh, PlayStation 1 Mini with like all the games on it and stuff. So I am actually going to make these two systems, probably maybe one, maybe two, um, mod that I can play and Japanese games and American games on it. So that is going to be pretty freaking cool. Um, so I can finally play American exclusives on the PlayStation 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are someone who lives in the PAL regions, do you actually collect American uh, PS2 games or, or import games in general, maybe Japanese games? I have quite a few Japanese games. I've actually had a little conversation with one of you, you know who you are, and um, I, I also told him like, hey, I, I don't know why, but somehow I really like how Japanese PS2 games look on PS3 games. I don't know why. I don't know. It's just very cool to have uh, Japanese imported PS2 games, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's really weird. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned because I'm going to make another one also about the PS2. Um, like, sh like, share, subscribe. And like always, you're going to see me next time. Nine minutes. I actually wanted to make a very small video, but okay, whatever.